all have bad games. PJ wasn't the only one. I can bench everybody if we go off bad games, you know. Let's talk about quarterback. And Mike, from, from our understanding, and you and I discussed this earlier today, is Baker Mayfield's job to win as it should be? Mayfield. Oh, beautiful. Huh. Okay. If you're a Baker Mayfield fan, are there any Baker Mayfield fans? I mean, let me know in the comment section down below if you're a Baker Mayfield fan. I just see people that love hating on him. I've never really necessarily seen like diehard Baker Mayfield fans out there. But if you happen to be one of those individuals, I have some good news for you. Previously, I wrote out Baker Mayfield's career completely saying that there was no hope for this man whatsoever. But it seems like we got an update. And it seems like in this update, there is a chance, one last chance for Baker Mayfield Field, I actually have a spot in the NFL. So before we get to the content, your boy had a BlockFi account. He lost a significant amount of cryptocurrency, about 20 Ethereum in that BlockFi account, which first of all, f you Andre Jick. And secondly, if you want to support the channel any further, I have a Patreon link and a channel memberships link. None of that's expected, but obviously appreciated. Now that we get all that out of the way, work. I'm not gonna lie, it's really hard to keep track of all my subscriptions currently. I mean, there's ESPN+, Spotify, Apple Music, Netflix, Hulu, Disney+, HBO Max, Tinder Premium, and that's just all off the top of my head. And at a specific point, it becomes a lot to keep track of. And no one else was struggling with this more than my dad, which is why I got him Rocket Money, which back then it was actually called Truebill. Rocket Money is an all-in-one finance platform that allows you to save more and spend less. And it allows you to do a lot of cool things, man. It's a personal finance manager that allows you to manage your subscriptions, lower your bills, monitor your credit score, and build your savings all in one place. I mainly used it to cancel unwanted subscriptions that I wasn't aware of having. They do this by monitoring recurring charges to your account and allows you to cancel unwanted subscriptions with a tap. But that's not all they do. By simply uploading a photo and tapping a button, Rocket Money will negotiate your bills for you from internet service bills to cable and phone bills you can automatically monitor your spending and your budget and allows you to monitor your credit as well you can also set rocket money to automatically deposit into your savings account so one day you could open up your bank account and say oh my god i saved more than i thought and the coolest part of all is you get a clear picture of your net worth which really helps me out because i'm a cryptocurrency investor and that number is fluctuating consistently and right now you could try rocket money for free just go to rocketmoney.com slash microphone and you can even unlock more features with premium and thank you rocket money for the sponsor my check one two one two what's going on everybody the 2018 nfl draft is so interesting if you think about it it's just like aging in such a wild way because the player that i thought was most likely to be a draft bust was josh allen and he turned out to be a generational talent in my defense i really am used to seeing those project type qbs completely fail at the nfl level i mean prior to josh allen there was blake bortles prior to blake bortles there was blaine gabbert i'm happy that josh Josh Allen broke the mold because he is a remarkable human being to watch. And then the second most successful player in that draft class, Lamar Jackson, is currently in contract negotiations with the Baltimore Ravens. By the way, he is facing off against the number one overall pick in that draft, Baker Mayfield, this upcoming Sunday, which is probably why we're discussing this video to begin with, who is being backed up by the second quarterback that was drafted in this class in Sam Darnold. You might be wondering who I thought was the player that was going to succeed in this draft class no matter what. You're going to get a good kick out of this. Josh Rosen. I thought Josh Rosen was going to be a can't miss prospect. Yeah, I kind of fumbled that one too. I'm sure I wasn't the only one to think that, but maybe it's because I went to UCLA and I wanted him to succeed. But that's besides the point. There are instances in the NFL where we see teams holding back their talent. I mean, a year and a half ago, I made a video on what if Patrick Mahomes was drafted by the Chicago Bears. And just to summarize, I don't think Patrick Mahomes would have been that successful on the Chicago Bears. I feel like there is a decent amount of luck 
luck that goes into each and every player's potential success in the NFL. I mean, if you look at Tom Brady's situation, what if Tom Brady never got the opportunity to start for the New England Patriots? What if Drew Bledsoe never got injured? What if Patrick Mahomes was drafted by a dumpster franchise that just clearly didn't know how to manage his talent? Do you really think he would have been successful with John Fox and Matt Nagy as his head coaches? The fact that Alex Smith was his mentor, he got a year to sit behind Alex Smith and also had Tyreek Hill and Travis Kelsey and has one of the most brilliant minds in the NFL to make sure he doesn't fail, really contributed to Patrick Mahomes' success. Another good example of a player whose talent I think is being a little mismanaged is without a doubt Trevor Lawrence. I've seen a lot of people throw out that Trevor Lawrence is a bust, but the thing is I see Trevor Lawrence making throws that most quarterbacks can't make. And usually when he fails, I really think that has more to do with the pieces that are around him or just really bad play calling. He's a player that I think is going to figure it out no matter what, but I'm not gonna lie. I feel like he would have had a much smoother start to his career if he was drafted by the New York Jets as opposed to the Jacksonville Jaguars. And probably the best example of this is none other than Odell Beckham Jr. And why would I say Odell Beckham Jr.? Well, if you remember last year, Baker Mayfield was flying high, coming off of a season where he led the Cleveland Browns to one of their greatest finishes in decades, beating a division rival opponent in the playoffs. Yes, I know the Cleveland Browns defense were a huge reason for that success. But regardless, whenever your quarterback is able to take you to those heights, it's something that should be celebrated. So going into last season, the stakes were high for Baker Mayfield and the expectations were even greater. You see, Baker Mayfield's contract was expiring soon and the Cleveland Browns needed to make a decision on whether or not Baker Mayfield was their franchise QB. It was without a doubt a make or break season for Baker Mayfield and the Cleveland Browns last year. And this is just another example of just really bad luck in managing your career. Baker Mayfield sustained an injury in the earlier part of his career. I don't want to say this is the only reason he wasn't successful, but I definitely want to say that this couldn't have helped him at all whatsoever. I mean, sustaining a shoulder injury and then deciding, hey, I'm going to be the brave leader in the locker room and play on this shoulder injury because this team knows who I am. I'm coming off of a season where I threw 26 touchdowns and eight interceptions and led this team to one of their greatest finishes in decades. So I should without a doubt be able to play through this injury and be okay. And a couple of weeks into the season, you have Odell Beckham Jr.'s dad calling him out for not targeting OBJ enough. OBJ ends up getting released. OBJ then goes to the LA Rams and succeeds with the Los Angeles Rams and even wins a Super Bowl with the Los Angeles Rams while seeing a gigantic increase in his statistical output. Yeah, that's not necessarily the greatest look for Baker Mayfield. And it's also a great example of another player that was literally held back by his team. That combined with the fact that the Browns finished with an eight and nine record and it seems like the writing was on the wall for Baker Mayfield. After a season where he threw 17 touchdowns to 13 interceptions, the Cleveland Browns started flirting with Deshaun Watson. And the moment Baker Mayfield found out that the Browns were flirting with Deshaun Watson, not even trading for Deshaun Watson, he posted a hearty farewell to the Cleveland Browns, which is without a doubt the biggest mistake of his entire career. The Browns would give up one of the craziest packages I've ever seen for Deshaun Watson and sign him to one of the craziest contracts I've ever seen as well with a fully guaranteed $240 million contract and Baker Mayfield started holding out, refusing to go to practice. This is where I said he made an all-time mistake because you see, Baker Mayfield going into this season is on the last year of his rookie deal, meaning he's gonna hit free agency no matter what. So with that being said, if you stay on the Cleveland Browns and if you perform really well, even if it's at a limited capacity, you will be able to convince a team that, hey, Baker Mayfield just had a shoulder injury in 2021. But in 2022, when he was healthy, he was performing really well. I mean, hell man, you're having Carson Wentz convince multiple teams that he could still be a top tier QB. So I don't think it's necessarily far-fetched for Baker Mayfield to consistently get jobs if he performs well in the situations he's in. But unfortunately, he didn't put himself in the best situation to succeed. While the Cleveland Browns would have without a doubt been the best situation for him because he would have only played in 12 games this season at the time we didn't know what Deshaun Watson's suspension was going to be. But let's say Baker Mayfield plays all 12 games. Let's say the Cleveland Browns finish with something like a 10 and two record or a nine and three record. And then Deshaun Watson comes back. One, not only does a QB controversy starts, but that also boosts up Baker Mayfield's stock for free agency. Now, unfortunately, Baker Mayfield, like all of us as 
human. And I guess the emotions of the Cleveland Browns being so quick to move on from him just completely clouded his judgment. Because eventually he pushed the Cleveland Browns to trade him and he got traded to the Carolina Panthers, which is a significantly worse situation than the Cleveland Browns. Instead of having Kareem Hunt and Nick Chubb as your running backs and Amari Cooper, David Njoku, and Dave Bell to throw the football to and a really good defense backing you up, you now go to the Carolina Panthers whose head coach was on the hot seat. He eventually got fired. Whose entire team was practically on the trade block except for Brian Burns and DJ Moore who has been cycling quarterbacks unsuccessfully throughout the past couple of years in hopes of a better situation just because you were guaranteed the starting job. And after a while, Baker Mayfield went from being the starting QB for the Carolina Panthers to the backup QB for the former XFL MVP, DJ Walker. There's no doubt in my mind after this season, you went from a player that could potentially get picked up as a potential starter in the off season to a player that is probably gonna be a perennial backup for the rest of his career. However, it seems like Baker Mayfield is going to get one last opportunity and it's going to be against a very familiar foe. You see, PJ Walker recently sustained an injury, which means that Baker Mayfield is going to get a chance here because according to Ian Rappaport, Panthers coach Steve Wilkes announced that PJ Walker has a high ankle sprain, which means Baker Mayfield is back in as the starting QB and Sam Darnold will back him up. Here's the thing, man. I'm going to be honest. Baker Mayfield did not have the best opportunity with the Panthers. He literally had like a month to learn the brand new playbook and the brand new offense that he's going to run. And literally after learning it, I don't know if they're running a new offense underneath Steve Wilkes, but there's been a lot of roster turnover as well. Robbie Anderson was traded. Christian McCaffrey was traded. And although this wouldn't have been the greatest result for him, given what happened to him with Cleveland, because I think the best possible scenario for him would have been to stay with the Cleveland Browns. This at least improves his prospects, at least somewhat, assuming he makes the most out of this opportunity. Here's a guy that's had experience playing the Baltimore Ravens before. And at the very minimum, even though there's a good chance he doesn't succeed against the Baltimore Ravens, at least he has an opportunity to show that he wasn't the dumpster fire of a QB that he was during the beginning of the season. I mean, he performed fairly well in limited action versus the Cincinnati Bengals. He had a 70% completion percentage. He threw for 155 yards and two touchdowns. He had the highest QB rating of his season with 126. So Baltimore is going to be a huge game for Baker. But at the same time, this isn't a team that is necessarily being very patient with its QBs. It seems like if you make one mistake, you're automatically benched on the Carolina Panthers. And if Baker Mayfield fails against the Baltimore Ravens, I wouldn't be surprised that the Carolina Panthers pivoted towards Sam Darnold. Bear in mind, PJ Walker has a high ankle sprain. We don't know how long he's going to be out. I mean, this is the exact same injury that Cooper Cup suffered in the Rams week 10 loss to the Arizona Cardinals in the fourth quarter. Now, obviously there's different levels of high ankle sprains, and I'm not necessarily rooting for PJ Walker to be out for a longer period of time, but this would give Baker Mayfield or Sam Darnold an opportunity to really show what they got for the rest of the season. And don't look at the Carolina Panthers as a guaranteed tanking team because something you should understand about this team is a lot of the individuals that are involved from the quarterbacks all the way to the head coach to players like Deontay Foreman as well. This whole team is fighting for a job at this point. Baker Mayfield's fighting to prove to the entire NFL that he could still play in the NFL. Steve Wilkes' last opportunity to be a head coach in the NFL was when he coached the Arizona Cardinals the year before they drafted Kyler Murray. Deontay Foreman has been a journeyman running back who's been pretty solid whenever he had the opportunity to shine. So we don't know how long this window of opportunity is going to be open for Baker Mayfield. He went from a player that I thought was going to wash out of the league for sure at the end of the season to a player that might have a chance at maintaining a position in this league based upon how he plays. Don't make any mistake about it. If he messes up this chance, he could be out for good. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. Aside from that, I'm your boy Mike, and I'm dropping our mic until our next upload.